good morning uh, today we are going to see about introduction to the gastrointestinal system the gastrointestinal tract GIT consists of a hollow muscular tube starting from the oral cavity where food enters the mouth continuing through the pharynx oesophagus stomach and intestine to the rectum and anus where food is expelled there are various accessory organs that assess the tract by secreting enzymes to help break down food into its components called nutrients. Thus the salivary glands, liver, pancreas and gallbladder have important functions in the digestive system. The food prop is propelled along the length of the GIT by peristatic movements of the muscular walls. This is a gastrointestinal tract. It starts with the oral cavity and ends with the rectum. The primary purpose of the gastrointestinal tract is to break food down into nutrients which can be absorbed into the body to provide energy. First, food must be ingested into the mouth to be mechanically processed and moistened. Secondly, digestion occurs mainly in the stomach and small intestine where proteins, fats, carbohydrates are chemically broken down into their basic building blocks. Smaller molecules are then absorbed across the epithelium of the small intestine and subsequently enter the circulations. The large intestine play a key role in reabsorbing excess water. Finally, undigested material and secreted waste products are excreted from the body via defecation called passing of feces. In the case of gastrointestinal disease or disorders, these functions of the gastrointestinal tract are not achieved successfully. Patients may have developed symptoms of nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, malabsorption, constipation or obstructions. Gastrointestinal problems are very common and most people will have experienced some of the above symptoms several times throughout their lives. And the important thing, a basic structure of gastrointestinal tract. The gastrointestinal tract is muscular tube lined by a special layer of cells called epithelium. The contents of the tube are considered external to the body and are in community, continuity with the outside world at the mouth and the anus. Although each section of the tract as specialized functions, the entire tract has a similar basic structure with regional variations. The wall is divided into four layers. One is mucosa. The mucosa is innermost layer of the digestive tract, has specialized epithelial cells supported by an underlying connective tissue layer called the lamnia properia. The lamnia properia contains blood vessels, nerves, lymphoid tissues and gland that support the mucosa. Depending on its function, the epithelium may be simple or stratified. Simple means a single layer, stratified means a multiple layer. The next one, submucosa. The submucosa surrounds the muscularis mucosa and consists of fat fibrous connective tissue and larger vessels and nerves. At its outer margin, there is a specialized nerve plexus called submucosal plexus or mesensner plexus. This supplies the mucosa and submucosa. And next one is muscularis externa. This mouth the, this smooth muscle layer has inner circular and outer longitudinal layers of muscle fibers separated by minsteric plexus or aubeic plexus. The neural inversions control the contraction of these muscles and hence the mechanical breakdown 
and peristalsis of the food within the lumen and next one serosa mastonary the outer layer of the gat is formed by fat and another layer of epithelial cells called mesothelium so this is cross sections of the uh, uh, gat that is that contain uh, serosa short form serosa and the uh, last one is uh, mastonaries and next one the organs of gastrointestinal systems so this in this first one salivary glands three pairs of salivary glands communicate with the oral cavity each is a complex gland with a numerous acini lined by secretory epithelium the acini secrete secrete their contents into specialized ducts each gland is divided into smaller segments called lobes salivation occurs in response to the taste smell or even appearance of food this occurs due to no signal that tell the salivary glands to secrete saliva to prepare and moisten the mouth each pair of salivary glands secretes saliva with a slightly different compositions so this is a salivary glands cross section of salivary glands salivary glands contain parotid glands and sub mandibular glands and as sublingual glands so this is first one parotid glands the parotid glands are large irregular shaped glands located under the skin on the side of the face they secrete 25% of saliva they are situated below the zygomatic arc cheekbone and cover part of the mandible lower jaw bone an enlarged parotid gland can be easier felt when one uh, clenches their teeth the parotid produce a watery secretions which is also rich in proteins immunoglobulins or secreted help to fight microorganism and amylase proteins start to break down complex carbohydrates a next one submandibular submandibular glands secrete 70% of the saliva in the mouth they are found in the floor of the mouth in a groove along the inner surface of the mandible these glands produce a more viscid thick secretions rich in mucin and with a smaller amount of protein mucin is a glycoprotein that act as a lubricant and next one sublingual the sublinguals or the smallest salivary glands covered by a thin layer of tissue at the floor of mouth they produce approximately 5% of the saliva and their secretions are very sticky due to the large concentration of mucin the main functions are to provide buffers and lubrications the next organ in git is oesophagus the oesophagus is a muscular tube of approximately 25 cm in length and 2 cm in diameter it extends from the pharynx to the stomach after passing through an opening of the diaphragm the wall of the oesophagus is made up of a inner circular and outer longitudinal layers of muscle that are supplied by the oesophageal nerve plexus the nerve plexus surrounds the lower portion of the oesophagus the oesophagus functions primarily as a transport medium between compartments the next one is stomach the stomach is a j shaped expanded bag located just left of the midline between the oesophagus and small intestine it is divided into four main regions and has two borders called the greater and lesser curvatures the first section is the cardia which surrounds the cardial orifice where the oesophagus enter the mouth The fundus is the superior dilated portion of the stomach that has contact with the left dome of the diaphragm. The body is the largest section between the fundus and the curved portion of the J. So this is a typical structure of oesophagus that is uh, uh, start from a 
Next, the functions of the stomach. The stomach's uh, functioning a uh, lot of functions. First one, the short term storage of ingested food. Second, mechanical breakdown of food by churning and mixing motions. Chemical digestions of portions, proteins by acids and enzymes. Stomach acid kills bugs and germs. Some absorption of substances such as alcohol. Most of these functions are achieved by the secretion of the stomach juices by gastric glands in the body and fundus. Some cells are responsible for secreting acid and others secrete enzymes to break down proteins. The next one, small intestine. The small intestine is composed of the duodenum, jejunum and ileum. The advantage, the average approximately 6 meter in length extending from the pyrolic, pyrolic spencester of the stomach to the leocasial valve separating the ileum from the casium. The small intestine is compressed into numerous folds and occupies a large proportion of the abdominal cavity. The duodenum is the promixal, promixal C-shaped section that curves around the head of the pancreas. The duodenum serves a mixing function as it combines digestive secretions from the pancreas and liver with the contents expelled from the stomach. The start of the duodenum is marked by sharp bend and duodenum duo denogenal flexure. It is in the jejunum where the majority of digestion and absorption occurs. The final portion of the ileum is the longest segment and empties into the casium at the ileogical function. So this is a structure of digestive system that is start with the stomach, duodenum, jejunum ileum and cecium. Next one, large intestine. The large intestine is a horse shoe shaped and extends around the small intestine like a frame. It consists of the appendix, casium, ascending, transverse, descending and sigmoid colon and the rectum. It has a length approximately 1.5 meter and a width of 7.5 cm. The casium is the expanded punch pouch that receives material from the ileum and starts to compress food products into fecal material. Food then travel along the colon. The wall of the colon is made up of several products, several pouches that are held under tension by three thick bands of muscles. Tinea coli. The rectum is the final 15 cm of the large intestine. It extends to hold fecal material before it passes through the anorectal canal to the anus. Thick bands of the muscle, known as spinsters, control the passage of feces. This is a structure of large intestine. The functions of large intestines can be summarized. The accumulation of unabsorbed material to form feces. Some digestion by bacteria. The bacteria are responsible for the formation of intestinal gas. Reabsorption of waters, salts, sugar and vitamins. And next organ is liver. The liver is a large reddish brown organ situated in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. It is surrounded by the strong capsule and divided into four lobes, namely right, left, caucudate and quadrate lobes. The liver has several important functions. It acts a, it act as a mechanical filter by filtering blood that travels from the intestinal system. It detoxifies 
several metabolite metabolites including the breakdown of bilirubin and osteogen in addition to the in addition the liver as a synthetic functions producing albumin and blood clotting factors <laughs> however its main roles in digestion or in the production of bile and metabolism of nutritions all nutritions absorbed by the intestines pass through the liver and are processed before traveling to the rest of the body the bile produced by cells of the liver enters the intestines at the duodenum here bile salts break down lipids into small smaller particles so there is a greater surface area of digestive enzymes to act so this is a structure of liver containing various parts so there is four lobe right lobe left lobe two lobe that is gall bladder and coronary lightment etc so this is a functions of the liver the liver that removes potentially toxic by products of the certain uh, medications liver prevents shortage of nutritions by the strong vitamins minerals and sugar it multiplies or break down nutritions from food to produce energy when needed produce most proteins needed by the body and it helps your body to fight infection by removing bacteria from the blood and it produces most of the substances that regulate blood clotting and also it produces a bile a compound needed to digest fat and to absorb vitamin a d e and k and next one is gall bladder the gall bladder is a hollow pear shaped organ that sits in a depression on the posterior surface of the liver right lobe it consists of a fundus body and neck it empties via a cystic duct into the biliary duct system the main function of the gall bladder or storage and concentration of bile bile is a thick that contains enzymes to help dissolve fat in the intestines bile is produced by the liver but stored in the gall bladder until it is needed the bile is released from the gall bladder when concentration contraction of its mus muscular walls in response to hormone signals from the duodenum in the presence of food this is structure of gall bladder it contains uh, three parts fundus body and neck <laughs> and next one is pancreas finally the pancreas is a lobular pinkish gray organ that lies behind the stomach its head communicates with the duodenum and its tail extends to the spleen the organ is approximately 15 cm in length with a long slender body connecting the head and the tail segments the pancreas has both exocrine and endocrine functions the endocrine is refers to production of hormones which occurs in the isolates of langerhans the isolates produce insulin glycogen and other substances and these are the areas damaged in diabetes mellitus the exocrine portions make up 80 to 85% of the pancreas and it's the area relevant to the gastrointestinal tract so this is typical structure of uh, pancreas and it is made up of a uh, numerous acne small glands that secrete contents into ducts which ex eventually lead to the duodenum the pancreas secretes fluid rich in carbohydrates and inactive enzymes secretion in triggered by the hormones released by the duodenum in the presence of food the pancreatic enzymes include carbohydrates lipases uh, nucleases and uh, proteolytic enzymes that can break down different components in food these are secreted in an inactive form of inactive form to prevent digestion of the pancreas itself the enzymes become active once they reach the duodenum thank you
Uh, today we uh, seen about uh, gastrointestinal tract. We'll see another uh, important video. Thank you.